All right, everybody, it's shader time. Here we are. We are going to make a shader for this little fella. First, I want to turn off some of this visual corrupt. I'm going to get rid of the collision shape, the area 2D, the raycast 2D. So now we can see the little fella just nicely. What's nice about shader development and Godot and in other, la other uh, tools is you can see what's going on as you do the shader. Okay, there are two different, there are three actually different kinds of shaders in Godot. You have to tell it what you want. First one is spatial, that's for 3D. Second one is a canvas item, which is for 2D rendering, which is what we'll use. The third one is for particles, so you can use shaders for particle systems. So in order to do our canvas item, I'm going to put that on the sprite itself. To do that, we will click here, material, new material, and we'll say shader, new shader. Click on that, and we have this little box that comes up where we can type in our text. This is the code for our shader. First thing that Godot needs to know is what kind of shader is it? So we'll say shader type is canvas item. I just like that. And additionally, for uh, a canvas item shader, you can specify what's known as a render mode. And I will show you what uh, the Godot, Godot language uh, reference has you can have it's a whole tree of the shader stuff right here and you can see it's organized nicely and there's the canvas item stuff and we can look and see there's the render modes the mix mode is default where alpha is the transparency that's what we want we don't really have to set it but we'll set it anyway so we'll just do that here so the shader type has to come first just an FYI now when you change the shader type that affects the different kinds of render mode or render modes. It also affects what type of built in variables are available because depending on what you want to do, well, certain variables become available to you that they, I guess, you know, the, that are basically filled in, the graphics card fills them in or whatever. Um, it also affects the processing functions. Now, there is one in particular we will use, and it's called the uh, void fragment function. Fragment shader is basically consisted of or comprised. This function is the main function. It is called for every single pixel in the texture that you are using the shader on. So in other words, we can take the fragment function and, and every time it's called, it's a new, new, new pixel in the image. And we can, we can modify that pixel. And we modify that pixel by using the special variable called color. And we can change that to be whatever we want. A color has four values, alpha or a red, green, blue, and an alpha. So that means it's a vector four. You'll see vector fours, vector threes, vector twos, and floats. Uh, those are some of the main, I guess, uh, very data types that are used in these types of shaders. And remember, we're not using GDScript. This isn't GDScript. This is more of a C-like language here. So we can create a... Uh, we can basically say, well, I want to see a red block. That will give us a red block because again, it's we're not taking into account any of the input data. We're just setting the color wholeheartedly every time a pixel comes in. We're saying, you're gonna be red, you're gonna be red. How do we get the color out? Well, some, I think, some will fill this color, very special color variable in, but Godot doesn't. Instead, it provides a function called texture in which you input another special variable that it does fill in and that is it fills in the texture it gives you the texture that it is being run on and it gives you the uv coordinate and when you do that you get the uh, actual pixel information which is what we want and in this case what i want to do is i want to replace the black eyes with a different color basically i want a color replacement shader a really simple one so we're going to get we're just going to be really simple so in order to do that, we want parameters that we can push into the shader. In order to, and that will, uh, that can be done by using a keyword called uniform. So any of these uniform variables will show up in the parameters of the shader. I want a vector four since I want to do a color. I want to say uh, source color. So we want to be able to specify a source color, and I can I can tell it what kind what what the default color is for this. So, and so basically you do that by saying hint color equals, and then I can make my vector four here, say whatever I want it to be. And we'll just go ahead and do black since that's what I wanna, 
that's what I want to use. And when we do that, we'll see a little thing, shader parameters pop up, pop up over here, and there's our source color. We can go in and change it as we like. And then we want a new color. That's the color we want to change the source color to. So new color, let's just make it red, and you see it pops up over here as well. Um, so in order to do this, it's real simple. We grab the color like this. So each, again, this is called every single pixel of your texture that you're using on using it on. Do this, and we just do a simple if statement. If that color is equal to the source color, then the color equals, equals to the new color. And you'll see his eyes turn red. And we can change that as well. We can change it to all... Whatever we want, just we can change whatever we want. But notice that this is checking for exactly that color. So if we were to come in here and we were to change it to white, you can see that it changes all the white to red, which is fine. But if we go anywhere in between, it's not that exact color. We don't get anything. Now we can we can we can do some things to make it so that the closer it gets to the color, the more it, more it affects it. But we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to have this exact thing. So it's going to be just. It has to be the exact color, which is really fine for the low color kind of stuff, low pixel, low, you know, low res stuff that we're doing. It works just fine. But, you know, we, we can look into that, uh, how, to, how to maybe linearly map that, uh, depending on how close the color is later. Um, but let's do something else. Let's make his eyes glow. So when we do that, what we can do is we need another... Uh, variable. We'll call it uniform float. It's just a plain old float. And we'll call it a blink multiplier. So this will allow us to set whether or not it does uh, the eyes do glow, you know, in and out or not. So if it's at zero, we should say, well, it, it's the uh, uh, this, that should be the, uh, the, the source color instead of the new color. But otherwise, it should be the, the other. So I'm going to comment that out. And in this case, we just want to set, you can set pieces of these, of this. So the color is actually this, it's a structure, it's a data structure. And uh, so we can look at it by, you got, you got, you got basically you have a red, green, blue, and an alpha. And I'm just going to set the alpha, go ahead and set the alpha to the new color dot alpha. Because we don't want to mess with that. What we want to mess with is, and you can do this too, this is a cool trick. You can say, I want to take the RGB together and I want to do something with it. There's a function called mix. And we'll use, we're going to use mix. And that is, we're going to start with, a, I'm just going to put little labels in here so you see what it does. Start color, and then we can say end color. And then we'll say interpolation amount. And that goes from 0 to 1. So as, as if, when, when this is 0, we have this color. When this goes to 1, then we have this color. So basically what we want is a function here that goes from 0 to 1. We can do that by, and let me, let me go ahead and put the colors in here because, you know, so that would be the color.rgb, and then the end color is going to be our new color, right, .rgb. So what we can do is we can, there's a function, there are several functions, there's trig trigonometric functions available here. We want, let's use, do I want to use sine or cosine? Sine or cosine. Let's use cosine. Let's use cosine. Cosine. And there's, a, there's another special variable that gets passed in, and that variable is called time. And the time goes from 0 to 3,600 seconds, so that's about an hour. After an hour, it will run. It will, you know, flip over. It basically, you know, goes back to 0. So that's really not, not generally a big deal because nobody sits there and looks at something for an hour and watches it. So anyway, and that time is in seconds. You know, it's a floating point value. So we'll take that um, and we'll multiply it by our blink rate. Now, here's a problem. We are going, uh, or blink multiplier, I'm sorry. We are going negative because cosine, remember, goes from 1 to zero and then goes down to negative one. So its range is from one to negative one. But we really want it to be from zero to one. 
So what we can do is a couple of things. We're going to do a couple of things here. One is we can offset it. So let's just put this in parentheses. So we want 1.0. We want to add 1 to it. So now it starts at 2 and goes to 0, right? But we but we want it to go from uh, 1 or from from 1 to, from 0 to 1 basically. So let's just multiply it by half. And now we have uh, a cosine that is uh, that is goes from one to zero. But the problem is here, if we turn the blink multiplier off, I want those eyes to be black. So basically, I want this to be zero. So then we need to add an additional offset here. And here's where um, here's where constants come in. Is you can create constants in the shader and uh, hopefully I showed I don't remember if I showed this or not but here is the documentation for all this the shading language has this nice little tree but you can do uh, there's all sorts of great stuff in here you got the canvas item shaders you have shaders in general you have the shader render modes the processor functions the shader language uh, we got constants and that's what we want we want to create a constant and really we want this constant we want pi because we want to offset that cosine we want to offset it by pi so that basically we'll start when when the blink multiplier is at zero cosine of zero is one we want that to be zero so if we offset that by pi which we can come up here and we can say add that so we'll offset that by pi then we should get black eyes because now this, if this is zero, cosine of zero is one, then we offset it by pi. Cosine of pi is negative one, but since we have changed where that is, that's going to be zero. So zero times 0.5 is zero. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want. So now note, if I change this to like two, now we get, we get the glowing eyes, which is exactly what we want. So, so there is our shader at least for this from for this particular episode this is the shader now let's do this real quick let's have it so that we can control this shader from the game itself so in order to do that let's add a function to the player uh, let's call it uh, set eyes and let's make a color as an input and let's make a uh, let's say blink multiplier and that's going to be a float. And all we have to do in order to get this to work is we need to call into that material. So we, that's in the sprite dot material. That's what we put it on, remember. There's a function called set, uh, set shader parameter. And what you put in here is the name of the parameter as it's displayed uh, here not this, but this. So we need this actual name. So if we want to play, we want to say the new color. We don't have to change the source color because it's already correct. We don't need to change it, but we want to change the source color. Uh, I guess, yeah, let's make it to where we can change the source color. So the source color should be uh, the color C, and I'm back on and then we can take this also and we can change the blink multiplier like so. And we'll do a blink mult. So that should change uh, those, those uh, shader, uh, shader parameters at runtime. We can sort of prove that by doing this real quick. Set eyes color dot. Let's set it to, I like Alice. Let's do Alice blue. And we'll set the blink rate to three. So whenever he comes up, we should see a see see the eyes glowing. And see we do. Very cool. Okay, so it works. Now let's let's set it so that uh, we get no blink at the beginning whenever he comes up. But in the game, whenever he picks up the key. Let's set it here. So that would be in the level. Uh, there's the player. And then we'll just say set eyes like that. 
color dot orange. Let's do orange red. And then we'll set a blink rate. Let's just set a blink rate of two and just see if it works. Okay. Go to do the game. See what we get. Get the key. Now his eyes should be bling. Yeah, see, there they are. They're just kind of glowing slowly. And then whenever we're going to the next level. So there we, there we go. Simple, very simple shader. Sort of a way to just introduce you into the world of shaders. This one doesn't do much, but it does something. And so it's just a way to, um, way to get in. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.